this video, I'm going to be going over my Buffalo Bills trips tied in offensive ebook for you guys. If you guys want to get all of my Madden offensive and defensive ebooks, as well as all of the offensive and defensive ebooks that we're going to be dropping for College Football 25, they are all available for one price of just $10 by joining our school.com community page. I'll put a link to that in the description below, but that's where you'll get access to all of our offensive defensive ebooks for both games, um, as well as a full community support behind it where you can ask your questions and uh, can kind of get some support uh, on your journey to becoming the best band player that you can be. So if you want to sign up for that, the link's going to be down in the description below. Today we're talking about the Buffalo Bills offensive, but specifically the trips tight end formation, probably my f favorite Madden formation pretty much of all time. I just like the way the formation works and uh, there's a lot you can do with it. So real quick, our free form settings, placement and accuracy near 20 out of 20. A lot of people like 20 out of 20. Uh, basically that's the top level passing settings you can have. But some people um, who are just starting out or maybe not as good at, not necessarily good at free form, but just not as experienced or comfortable with the higher radical speed, try 13 out of 20, try 7 out of 20, try even 5 out of 20. All of those have been proven to work at a pretty high level. Now, I want to go over audibles for the Buffalo Bills offense. And uh, this is in, again, the Buffalo Bills playbook. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set a couple of really strategic audibles. So the first audible that we are going to set is going to be the play wide receiver short post. This is the best play in the playbook. This is the reason why you want to be in bills because of the play wide receiver short post. You also have some really versatile other plays here in PA boot shot verticals. And then for inside zone, I like to replace this with the RPO zone alert bubble. Now from there, I don't really use any of the other formations in this in this uh, playbook off, off rip here. You can certainly go to tight if you want to, and you can run double corner with drive corner, and you know you can do some, some stuff like that. Or you could go to bunch, and you could run verticals. Um, this bunch also has a read option in it. It has deep corner, uh, which is a good play, of course, and it has corner strike. So you kind of can get some stuff accomplished with your bunch if you wanted to audible to that. Uh, but honestly, I just don't feel like you really need to do that. And um, the only other thing I would say is this Y off X close. This is kind of a similar it's basically U trips it's their version of U trips in this formation but nothing really too uh too big that we want to really you know kind of dive into here um the open flex close you have the rpo you have the rpo that is really good out of this and then single back so for single back really what we're going to be looking to do with this is get down here into the deuce close formation and we have the stretch we have the jet sweep and we have the zone run or the counter run i like to utilize Pretty much all of those. Uh, and then, of course, like I said, you have that jet sweep super good down in the red zone. Wing slot, you have the stretch alert bubble. Uh, and then you also have the dive, and you have the zone version of that as well. Unfortunately, you don't have this, the sweep, but inside cross is a, is a very good play as well. So those are kind of the main things you're going to want to do in the red zone. And then also you have wing tight. Wing tight, in my opinion, probably the best uh, running set down here. The only problem is they don't have stretch. But you do have, you know, halfback smash, halfback dive. You have, um, you also have this uh, counter run that's really good. So you have some nice little under center stuff. If you wanted to audible around, you could. But really, the main reason you're running this is to exclusively run trips tied in. So what's unique about Bills is we're going to kind of come out in whatever, instead of coming out in our power play every single time, we're going to kind of come out in whatever we want to. And then we have our power play in our audible. So I'm going to be breaking down wide receiver short posts first. And I also wanted to just kind of touch on something that's super important when running trips tied in. Generally speaking, what you want to do is you want to run this with your trips to the wide side of the field. This is going to give you the most amount of space to be able to attack zone. So we're going to be showing all of these plays with the ball on the right hash and our trips will be to the wide side of the field. If the ball is on the left hash in the middle of the field, you know, it's the same distance both ways, so it doesn't really matter. But if the ball is on the left hash, you would want to flip your formation at the play call screen so that you can then have your trips to the wide side of the field. Okay, super, super important little tip about trips tied in. And now let's get into the first play. 
So the first play that I like to utilize, super simple play here, but it is a very good play for this. And as far as abilities go, I do like tight end apprentice, running back apprentice, or hot route master. Uh, hot route master really makes trips tight end super good. The main one you really need is tight end apprentice. Everything else you can kind of make up as you go, but tight end apprentice is really good. Is a really good uh, ability for the offense. So what we're going to do for our first setup is we're going to flat the middle trips receiver. We're going to zig the inside trips receiver. We are going to corner route our tight end, and then we are going to streak our running back. So the purpose of this play is this is what I would categorize as a power play. A power play is just simply something that is going to consistently work against the majority of defenses that you're going to face. And it only has a couple of very specific adjustments that are going to actually be able to defend this. So what's going to happen if we look here to the left side, and again, this is kind of focusing on most of the time people are going to be using on the running back side here. So what you're going to see is that the flat will get pulled out and then you can throw this zig kind of in between the hook curl defender and the hard flat defender out there on the, on that left hand side. So that's kind of the first main thing you want to do is you want to look at that flat zig. If they were to take that, you know, slot corner, maybe put him in a vert hook, then you would look out there, you see, okay, I can throw that flat route. So I'm just going to take what the defense gives me like that. So you're always kind of looking out there to see, you know, just kind of quick, what can we do? Another thing that you have going for you here is the short corner to the tight end. So if they're playing cover four or cover three hard flats, you're going to throw the short corner on the right with a little outside pass lead and just possession catch that against cover four or cover three coverage, and it's going to be really effective. Now, one thing I, I really think is important to say, though, about this corner route is let's say they have a curl flat defender. This curl flat defender, if you see him getting kind of getting depth like that, Sometimes he can play that corner, but what I have found is if I pass lead up and to the right, then it can, for the most part, kind of handle that adjustment. So I'll go to cover three here and kind of show you the same thing. So watch that curl flat defender. I'm pass leading up and to the outside. And as you see, I'm able to kind of free form that ball into a position where only my receiver can, can catch the ball. Now, that being said, if you are playing somebody and they decide to run a cover two coverage on that right side, so now it's a cloud flat zone, uh, same kind of thing. You can sometimes throw this up and out, and it can get over the top of that. The best method for defending the short corner to the tight end is they are just going to back off the slot corner. So just by that simple back off of the slot corner, that's going to get him to the depth he needs to be at. And oftentimes this throw will get intercepted. It didn't right there, but oftentimes it will. So especially with mid zone KO with the break on ball, that's really good. That's going to be a tight throw if they start backing that guy off. But in general, for most defenses, you are going to be able to pretty much consistently throw this tight end short corner against this alignment. And you'll see here again, you can just free form it up into the outside. Now, another way that a lot of people like to run dollar is they like to be in a base alignment. If they are in a base alignment, it is going to be a little bit different just in terms of how this is going to work. For the most part, it's going to be okay. But because that base line is out there, you see how it's a tighter throw. And it's certainly, you know, if you have a tall flat defender, it very well could be intercepted. So you got to kind of keep that in mind. What we're really looking for them to do on that right side is we're looking for that hard flat. If they're hard flatting, this is a lot more open than if they're not. So you see here, here's the hard flat. Just freeform down outside, catch it. And you see how we're able to kind of force them into certain adjustments that we want them to make. So one of the adjustments that we want them to make against this is we want we want the opponent to play cover two on the trips on the tight end side. If we can get that corner, to, if, if we can get them to play cover two on that tight end side, it's going to really be helpful for the offense. And you see that corner can sometimes get over it. But I, I do want to caution to say, you know, just be careful with those throws because I found that those are a little bit more mistake prone. But in general, uh, I did want to kind of go over this next piece of the route combo, and that is if the user runs to the running back, which most of the time will happen. Most of the time, the user will run to the running back. So if he does that, then this post route is going to come open in behind those yellow zones over the middle of the field. This is true against pretty much every single coverage in the game, whether it's cover two, whether it's cover three, whether it's cover four. This post route has to be user defended. Um, so you see here, I can throw it actually before he gets to that mid read on a cover two coverage. Cover two is probably going to do the best out of all of the coverages that we have and that we will see most people utilize. But that being said, 
you can still actually throw that against that coverage. So here's cover three, and you see kind of just gets in this really soft spot in between those yellow zones and those, uh, those deep zones. So this is super good against zone. Uh, one of the other really popular, uh, popular defenses that you need to be prepared and equipped to be able to attack is the double flat. So uh, the double flat is basically we're going to have you know, a hard flat and a cloud flat. This is also known as double Mabel, and they can kind of get to this a couple different ways. But in general, what we're going to be able to do with this play is we're going to be looking for the circle receiver or the running back or the post. So you'll see right here, you know, they kind of play that, but it opens up that middle of the field and we're able to throw that post in behind that route, which is what makes it ultimately, I think, one of the better routes in the game. Another really common adjustment that I see, especially out of a base line trip, Steve, is this idea that we're going to kind of basically man up everybody on the trip side, and then we're going to basically play cover two over here to the right. We might throw this guy in a middle third, or we might even blitz him for, for, you know, for what we want to do here. So very common kind of standard cover shell. This is something that I personally use against trips as well. Uh, so just kind of keep this in mind. But what you're going to see is this post, the short post, when it cuts inside, it actually kills that man coverage. Uh, you just got a possession catch there, there, but it's going to be really good against kind of the scissor adjustment that a lot of people like to do against trips. So this is another one of the reasons why this is such an important play in your offense is because this post route just consistently will get open for you, um, you know, kind of on that cut over the middle right there. And, and, and I think that was the hook curl defender there. But in general, that post is going to do a really good job. And I'll show it to you one more time just so we're, just so we're clear on kind of what's going to be happening. But again, if we go with the safety man up here, and then let me let me just get this hook curl more on the running back just for the sake of illustration, because that's where the user is going to have to go. I'm going to explain that in just a second. But let's take a look at this post. So you see here on that second cut inside, just passing the sign, possession, catch it. You're going to get that fall down animation pretty much every single time. So as I said in the beginning, one of the other things that's really good about this 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 play is it forces. So let's say this guy decides I'm going to play a little bit more aggressive onto that wide receiver short post and we're going to basically play a defensive coverage that looks like this what's going to happen is if they roll more back to the middle of the field you're still making this read here and this this running back streak is going to get out a lot more than you might think and you can throw it in that little seam pocket against that coverage so super good against that as well now the next coverage that we're going to be covering here is we're going to be talking and taking a look a little bit at the cover two, uh, just kind of just general man coverage. How does this how does this play do against general man coverage? So this play is pretty good against general man coverage because you have this whip route. Uh, this zig almost always is going to get open to that right hand side. Now as you saw right there, this is actually something that's super common in Madden twenty four. A lot of a lot of times this um, this zig route can get overthrown for whatever reason. So what you want to do with this is you don't want to freeform it. I find just simply pass leading it to the left that allows for a, right, a nice rack catch, and then we're able to you know get out there and get a couple of yards. So for the next route that we're going to take a look at here in terms of man coverage is going to be this tight end corner. Now this was a shade out, shade underneath, and as you see, sometimes the man coverage can play this really 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 well but what you're also going to see a lot of times is that this tight end will win in man coverage so again it is a read not every route is going to beat man coverage every single time perfectly but what you are able to do is look out there say okay does he have leverage okay he doesn't but my next read the running back streak is one of the most consistent routes in this game at being able to manipulate and really effectively attack any kind of man coverage whatsoever. So if you're thinking about this from a user perspective, if they're trying to play you in man coverage, they're going to have to basically play that running back side. And so they're going to have to kind of be that hook curl defender. Well, that then opens up the zig route, of course. And it also is going to open up this backside post, which on the inside cut, oftentimes this is a possession catch. It's kind of a trust throw to a degree, because if you freeform that down into the inside, I pretty much always find that he catches the ball. Uh, it's it's pretty much been one of the most consistent routes for me this year against man coverage. You have to wait until he cuts, and it is a little bit of a skill to be able to throw this. But in general, when he cuts, kind of right there cut, free form inside, and you get that nice possession catch to be able to leverage the power of this play against man-to-man -man coverage.
Now, what a lot of people like to do against trips tied in that we really need to touch on right now is they love to play man coverage. They love to play man coverage against trips. It's a variety of different shells, variety of different ways in which they can get to this. But in general, this is what we get a ton. We get a ton of this look right here. And essentially, you can get man coverage a lot of different directions, but the basic idea is going to look something like what you see on your screen. And oftentimes, what's going to happen is they're going to kind of adjust and play zone to the tight end side, and they're going to play man to the trip side. This is very, very common, very popular. So how do we like to manipulate coverages like what you see on your screen? It's really with this next setup. This next setup is the play PA boot shot. What you're going to do is you are going to post your tight end you are going to zig route your middle trips receiver right now. And then from there, it's kind of up to you if you want to leave this little kind of shallow route or drag him. That's kind of going to leave that up to you. But basically what you're going to get here is your zig will win against man coverage. Your tight end will win against man coverage. Even if they have a deep zone as they did right there, that tight end is going to come underneath of that deep zone and is going to be able to manipulate the defense as well. Now, just for the purpose of the video, and for the purpose of kind of just explaining what we're doing while we're doing it here is I just want to show you just true standard man coverage and uh, and what that might look like. So, again, PA boot shot, just zig that left side guy, tight end apprentice post. So you see here this little shallow route, oftentimes that's going to be able to beat man coverage. However, just like the zig route, I find that these shallow routes, for whatever reason, the free forming on any kind of like shallow zig, shallow drag, shallow whatever – any kind of underneath type of free form throw to be a little bit troublesome. So, you know, just kind of like free form it horizontally across or just don't even do that and just regular pass lead it. Certainly fine with me. And most of the time, that's going to be just fine for you. Now, the next thing I want to show you about kind of this cover two man and, and just kind of make a little bit of a point here about the zig routes in general. Zig routes are your best friend against press man. They do a really good job of attacking press man. So what you'll see here is when triangle kind of cuts to the outside, it's going to look like he's covered. But if you rat catch that, it's almost always going to be 5, 10, 15 yards. And if you break a tackle, of course, it's going to be more. So they have to have, you know, kind of flat protection over to the left side, which I find most people don't do that. Most people are going to, um, you know, if, if they're playing man coverage, they're going to man up that triangle receiver. And that's going to be kind of the extent they're going to trust that man coverage to guard pretty much everything that he's on. And that's why the zig route in this play is going to be going to the middle trips receiver. And the next route, and, and really the money route, I think, for man coverage in this offense, of course, I say that we randomly get bagged. Sometimes this happens, guys. Man coverage, sometimes it just randomly kind of can play really well. And it's, it's honestly a little bit difficult to explain. It has to do just with the, the route running. It has to do with the way the receivers run their route. All of those are little factors, but what we have here is this tight end post almost always beats man. If it doesn't, then that means they're probably in cover to man, and that route right there will take the top off the defense completely. Most of the time, if they're shading underneath to try to stop the tight end post, then that means that that deep shot is going to be open for you. So this is where I kind of like to get into another little technique that I like to do occasionally. I don't do this a lot, but I do this occasionally um, against these kind of heavy press man-to-man -man coverages. If they're doing something like what you see on your screen right here, this is a little bit of a read, a little bit of a feel. But if you ever notice that they're playing that guy on a left and press man, just put him on a fade and then run your basic setup like this. And what you'll see is this fade is going to kind of get a step on that player and almost always is going to burn him over the top for a big play, at least be an option for you to be able to look at. So again, if you're ever getting a ton for whatever reason, if you're ever getting like a ton of cover two man, but they're trying to stop that deep skinny post by uh, utilizing the middle third adjustment, just you, instead of using the skinny post, just use a basic streak or a fade. And almost always you'll see, and you'll see here a little bit better. You can kind of get this ball out there and it's a rat catch. And it's normally a touchdown because most people don't run a lot of man coverage. Now, that being said, another coverage that is really popular uh, when you're running, when you're utilizing this offense is some type of cover one robber type of coverage. And normally it's going to look something like what you see here. But for the, our purposes, we're going to use man coverage and we're going to shade our coverage outside. And what oftentimes is going to happen is this is where the tight end post is going to be much, much more effective for you. You'll we'll see right here. The drag's wide open, the tight end's wide open, and the zig was wide open early. So this play has just been a staple in Madden for years. I'd be crazy not to talk about it. I'd be crazy not to teach it. 
Now, another defense that is really popular and is something you need to understand, like if you're going to play, if you're going to play Madden uh, and you're going to try to get really good at the game, you need to know how to beat this defense. This is double flat or double Mabel. What they're going to do oftentimes is they're going to man this triangle receiver up and then they're going to do what's called a double flat where they have a, a hard flat and a cloud flat or a five yard purple and a 30 yard cloud. This is a very common defense. This play is really good for manipulating it. What we're gonna do, same basic setup, just zig and post the tight end. And what you'll see here is this deep post route. When it cuts to the middle of the field, you're gonna wait for it to kind of clear. And then you're just gonna basically throw this all the way open for a one play score. So if you think about practically, and this is why it's super, super important to kind of understand, understand your arsenal of tools, what does that probably mean they can do from a coverage perspective? Because if you're playing defense against trip side in and you don't want to give that up, you have to somehow close the middle of the field. So the way that this is going to occur most of the time is you are either going to get a cover three to one side, basically a cover three to one side and a cover two to the other side. So it looks something like, you know, kind of what you see here uh, with, with the cloud flat on this outside and a vert hook here, right? This is pretty common, pretty pretty standard, what, what we would see. So how can you manipulate this coverage shell right here with the plays and everything that we've just been talking about? It really comes in in our next setup we're going to be showing you out of uh, the play verticals. And all we're going to do with this is we're either going to put our running back on a Texas route or an in route. And what this is going to do is our first read is always going to be the triangle receiver if they don't man him up, you are going to throw this against zone and possession catch it literally against every single zone in the game. So it doesn't matter if it's cover four. It doesn't matter if it's cover two. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, guys. You are going to take advantage of them not manning up this triangle receiver because nine times out of ten, he's going to be wide open for a quick hitter of about 10 to 15 yards. Now, kind of going back to that cover two coverage for just a second, what I did want to quickly mention is let's say that your opponent is running that cover two coverage and they they don't man up triangle for whatever reason. Maybe they try to get sneaky and they man up the outside guy to play the post or, you know, there, there's a lot of different things they could do to kind of to kind of utilize that defender. But what I want to get at here is that this verticals route, when you run the streak, if they're in cover two to the left side, this is going to basically split that safety and you can throw this to the inside in possession, catch it, and have a big play for you against cover two as well. Now, this is also really important because let's say you're getting a base align press and they're playing cover two to the, to the uh, trip side. So it looks something like what you see on your screen right here. If they're playing a coverage shell like this, now you can go to the play verticals and you look out there, oh, they're not playing cover three or cover four. They're playing cover two, and you can hit them on the outside of that cover two defense as well because of that really, really effective kind of pull route from that inside seam streak as well as paired with the, the outside vertical breaking route. So super, super good route combination here out of the play verticals in terms of, again, understanding what we're walking them into from a coverage perspective. Due to the play PA boot shot, they have to be very aware of covering the middle of the field. And so what we're ultimately walking them into oftentimes is kind of a coverage shell like this right here. Um, this is a very, very good trips tight end defense. But if you, look, if you look at this, it's not that difficult to identify where are the holes in this coverage. The biggest hole in this coverage is to that left side of the field because there's not a backed off deep flat defender. So what we're able to do is we go to verticals and we're going to use an outside apprentice C route. Now, the reason I like to use the outside apprentice C route is because most of the time they have the triangle receiver and the circle receiver manned up and they don't oftentimes man up that outside receiver. So he is going to run basically the perfect corner route. We're going to throw it right on the sideline and we're just trying to possession catch that and get out of bounds and get a really, really big play against that coverage that I just showed you that is super popular. And again, this is going to force them to have to have some type of a 30-yard cloud flat on that side of the field. So again, super effective setup here. And what you'll see is, if I could throw this down and outside, I should be able to catch it. And Mahomes is kind of selling me on the throw. I'm actually going to free form it this next time to kind of show you a little bit more accurately of what you should be seeing. But essentially, 
this throw should be caught and then you should get out of bounds immediately. So you see here kind of free form down outside. Only my receiver can catch that ball. If he doesn't catch it, it's a knockout. But generally, that's a really, really good route to have in your trips arsenal. Now, another thing that is really common uh, for people to do against trips tied in is they will do a lot to try to cover the middle trips receiver with with man coverage. It's, it's, again, this is a very, very common adjustment. So uh, what they would what they could potentially do to stop the corner route on the left is really one of two things. If they wanted to stay pressed up, then they would man this guy up on a triangle. They would hard flat this player and they would purple this guy and create a Mabel coverage like so. So this is where I like to get a little bit more basic, a little bit more simple in terms of my route combination. And this would also kind of go back to that wide receiver short post route combo. But if you look at the holes in the coverage, it's really not that difficult to identify here. The biggest hole in this coverage is what we're going to be able to do with our uh, middle trips receiver. So this is where, you know, a couple different methods to get to it. One of my favorites is just this right here, just flat streak, streak. And then we're going to run the running back underneath. This is a very underrated route combination for this because as you see, kind of the middle of the field completely vacates and this really attacks that position, that space, and that allows kind of that middle trips receiver to be super valuable uh, in the passing game. Now, we haven't even gotten into all of the route combos that are effective for that receiver, and we're going to get into some of those right now. So the first thing we talked about was the very high likelihood, high probability that you're going to see some type of cover two over here to the right side. And it oftentimes is going to mean kind of a coverage that looks like this. And this guy more than likely is going to be manned up on triangle because they have to defend the verticals. So this is kind of a standard way people would defend trips tied in. So what we're able to do uh, to be able to attack this coverage shell is we're going to go to PA counter go. We're going to streak the tight end, flat the middle trips receiver, and then we're going to in route the outside trips receiver. So essentially we're going to have a high low and oftentimes the user is going to be responsible for using the crosser because they are in cover two. Now I'm going to explain why it is really important that we call this play after we kind of know that they are in cover two, because if we call this play and they're running cover four, it's really not as effective as if they were in cover two. So what you're going to see again, uh, and provided that, but you see here, user has to go to that crosser or they have to run a backed off cloud flat on the right, or they have to run a quarter on the right side. So those are kind of the standard things that people could do to stop this. And so oftentimes what this is going to mean in terms of our defense is they're going to run with the crosser over the middle of the field. And so because they're having to man up triangle to take him away on a seam streak and verticals, this now opens up the entire middle of the field. And I, I really, this is why play action is really good in game and really terrible in Brax mode uh, because stuff like that happens. So I'm actually going to cancel the play action just so that stuff doesn't happen again. And then you'll see what I'm kind of getting at here. But basically this, this defender more times than not is going to run with the crosser if they are in cover two. So what you're going to see is this in route on the back end of this is going to kind of come open right here. And it's going to be a perfect check down for, for the offense. So that is kind of the first thing. Now, the reason I, I wanted to point out that it's very likely that they're going to be in cover four, cover, or they're going to be in cover two over there is because if they're in cover four or cover three, we really don't want to be calling this play. If we do, we want to hit this in route much earlier before he gets to the yellow zone. One other really cool trick with this is let's say they're playing a curl flat. The curl flat will suck into the in route, and then you can throw the flat route over there on that left-hand side, provided that he's not manned up in, in the adjustment sequence. So that's PA counter go. Another really underrated uh, setup for PA counter go is remember we said one of the most common adjustments that people are going to do is they're going to play this cover two over here to the right. And then on the left-hand side, they're going to do a lot of, a lot of different things, but ultimately it's going to be something kind of like what you see on your screen right here. And this guy oftentimes is going to be in a hard flat. So what we're going to do now is we're going to utilize PA counter go with a little zig route and a curl to the tight end. The reason I like this is because this deep out route 
is going to kind of get over the top of, you know, kind of over the top of the hard flat. And then oftentimes is going to actually beat man coverage. He did not beat man coverage well there, but a lot of times he will. And we'll kind of give a little more of a simple example of this. But again, PA counter go. And oftentimes, if you look here to that, that uh, see how he gets above the, cor the, the curl flat zone? It's kind of like a rounded corner route. I think that's one of the most underrated routes from trips tight end. And it does not get thrown nearly enough for how good it really is. And if you got a little bit better of a route running player there, it'll beat man coverage a little bit better. But just understand, like, this is, you know, just kind of another method that we can kind of attack that sideline on the right. Now, if he does get rerouted like that, I find some issues. But in general, most of the time, they're going to be playing hard flat on that side because they're trying to stop wide receiver short posts. And so this is just a way that we can kind of get this guy to be almost like another corner route to for the offense. The next setup that we're going to be talking about in our trip side in little kind of mini ebook here is going to be out of the play. If I can find it, PA slot corner. I don't know if I have it in here, actually. I don't think I do have PA slot corner, which is kind of odd. We're going to do it out of Bill's, uh, Bill's Y post. Bill's Y post has the corner out, so we can easily do it out of that as well. So uh, what, this, what this play is going to accomplish, a couple different things, a couple different setups for it. So let's say that you're getting, this was a little bit more popular in the beginning of the year, but let's say that you are getting, uh, you're running this, and you're getting kind of this spinner, heavy man blitz type of look. This is a really good setup for that um, because there's, a very simple route combo that's going to be very effective. So what we're going to do to run this uh, to its fullest potential against this look is you have to understand who's going to be guarding who. More than likely, this guy is going to be manned up on the running back, and then this guy is going to be in the middle of the field, and they're going to try to just blitz with what they have to the left side. So what we're going to do with our protection here is we're going to go to this Bill's Y post. We're going to wheel the running back. We are then going to drag the outside trips receiver, and then we're going to motion block this guy right here. By motion blocking this guy, what you're going to see is oftentimes we're going to be able to pick this up, and this running back destroys man coverage to the right side. As you see, once he cuts up field, he's going to be completely open, and oftentimes you can have a pretty big play uh, to that guy. You can motion block really either of them, but this is a really good method. Now, the other thing I wanted to show – again, just assuming this guy's the man coverage guy, is if you motion, let's say you motion the outside guy, it's the same exact combo. Now we're just going to motion this outside guy and block him here. What you'll see too is there's no middle of the field defender for your tight end, and that tight end post does beat man. It didn't beat it great there. It's probably a little bit more my fault on the free form, but this is another effective method uh, to be able to manipulate that man-to-man -man coverage. So again, this is really primarily a kind of a specific thing to getting blitzed a lot out of a cover zero look, but I love this play because I do think, you know, you're able to block most blitzes with that five-man protection. And, of course, Tredavious White is just going to go crazy now. But, in general, that tight end, when he cuts inside, and I'll show it. I'm going to get it one more time. Um, that, that tight end is going to be able to manipulate it. So, if you think about the user. User is having to either go to the running back or the user is going to have to go to the tight end. Oftentimes, they're going to choose the running back, in my experience, just because everybody knows how good and how, how fast that running back gets open. You know, So, once he kind of cuts to the middle, a lot of times – and Tredavious White's going to end it for me here, but um, he's going to beat man coverage. Now, I want to show this a little bit better, um, and, and we're going to try to do this without as much bumping because I do think that's part of the problem. So yeah, I'm going to get the user kind of out of the way here. But again, you know, basically the motion in, and I'm actually going to – this is why you want to wheel the running back so that there's no middle third defender, and now we finally are able to beat man coverage. And as you can see, this can be a, a one-play score against cover zero. So when you freeform this to the tight end, you really want to bend it to the inside. You really want to throw it as more of like a true almost crosser uh, against the coverage. Now, the next thing I did want to say about this is this also I find pretty decent for man. So what makes this a really good man-beating play um, is the fact that this corner is going to pull the deep half. So kind of back to that cover two man, and the wheel is going to pull the one in the middle. So now you have kind of a high-low read in the middle of the field, and a lot of times this guy is going to beat man, and he's going to split the cover two over the middle for a pretty big play and potentially a touchdown. So you have, you have that as well. And then we were talking a little bit about some different types of roles that could uh, be applicable. So let's say, for example, they, they were trying to maybe play man coverage like this. This is still a pretty good way to play 
but they're very vulnerable to the running back wheel on this setup. So this is just a very, you know, really good kind of versatile man beating type setup. And you see here, like if there's no safety help, this guy's a, a big play waiting to happen in man coverage. So a lot of different things that you can do now. This is not a play that the setup we just gave you is really not something that I want to run if I am anticipating that they are in zone coverage. If I randomly do get a zone look, what I probably want to do more than anything is try to get the ball to the drag over the middle. So drags are super safe. This can be split. Like you can split them kind of. It's a, it's a good post route. Oftentimes the user will run to the post. So just keep this in mind. But, you know, understand, like, you want to be trying to get to your check down because this is not a very well-equipped play to be able to attack his own coverage. It's really more for man coverage in particularly. Now, uh, the next setup we're going to show you out of this play is actually really effective for attacking, um, attacking zone. So the way that I like to attack zone out of this is we're going to try to flood this left side. Now, we understand uh, if, if you've been watching kind of the, the scheme so far, one of the things that you probably understand now is it is a very common adjustment for them to man up the triangle receiver, okay? That is like super, super common. So I want to make sure that I'm not running triangle on the flat route in this case. And the reason why is because it's going to be kind of a wasted route. So what I like to do is kind of make it look exactly the same. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to streak the triangle receiver to try to get a clear out route from him. And then a couple different choices. If you don't want to motion in, then you can smoke screen this guy on the right hand side. For this setup, generally, I will probably block the running back and then just curl the tight end on the back side. I don't think there's any, any special way. We're just trying to get a high low to the left. The other thing that you can do, though, is you can um, you can drag the backside receiver and then run the play like this and allow him to cross the formation. What this is going to do is it's just going to give you a later flat read, but it also clears out a little bit better on that left side. Now, you can also kind of same side motion snap this. The reason you might want to uh, you might want to same side motion snap this route is due to the fact that it can create a really nice high low for you so what you're going to do is you're going to streak the slot receiver or the middle trips receiver in this case you're going to curl the tight end or if you want to drag him you can but I, I find curling him is the best and then you're going to out route this outside trips receiver you're going to motion him to the right but as soon as he moves you're basically trying to snap the ball because you want to snap it before he actually gets to the line of scrimmage and this allows you to kind of get that street corner or flat combo that is just you know super effective the other thing that this is going to do a really good job of is this is going to beat cover two as long as they do not back off that left side corner and uh, we'll talk about how to manipulate that as well later on but essentially this is going to do a really good job here of just attacking this and you can play these little games on the back side i haven't gotten to that yet but you can play these little games on the back side of the play that I, I do think is important to just mention here. Um, some of the games that I like to play are a ghost route, a flat route, and then we run our, our play like this to the back side. These are super effective, just little two-man games that we can play uh, to kind of provide us a check down on that right side. Trips tight end, the best element of this offense is the spacing it provides. You want to be taking advantage of that, and I truly cannot stress that enough. Speaking of spacing, I'm going to show you a way in which we can attack that left side of the field uh, and really take advantage of the man up of the triangle receiver. So a lot of people like to man up this triangle receiver. Uh, this is kind of a standard way people like to defend you. And, you know, occasionally what they'll do is they'll put this defender, they'll start to put him in a deep half. This is where we have a couple different options. One of my favorite ways to attack it is to utilize the, kind of going back to that PA counter go stuff, but to utilize verticals. And we can just throw this corner route late in the route. So we're going to pass lead it up and outside. And you see we can throw that when they use that deep half. So if that guy's not in a quarter or a third, we can throw that with a high level of consistency. But the other thing that I wanted to just kind of um, draw your attention to is another really cool method that we can really play, we can really play with the user in the middle of the field. So the way that we're going to do this is, and you could literally, you could do this out of any play. 
um, you're going to have a streak on this left side. That's going to be your clear out route. You're then going to have a zig to your inside trips receiver. This is going to help with man coverage. It's going to help with a lot of different things. Make sure they're having to defend that flat. We're then going to put the tight end on a tight end apprentice post or a tight end apprentice crosser. I'm going to leave that up to you. Generally speaking, I think the post is better. Then we're going to go through and we're going to flat the, uh, the middle trips receiver. And then we're going to streak or ghost route the running back and motion this guy across. So now the play art looks like this. This is a super simple play. And look what we're able to do. We're able to attack. This is kind of like our version or the trips version and variation of Durham. So you can run this very similar to other formations that we know are super effective in Madden. So if you think about this, what's the user gonna have to do? The user is gonna have to sit and he's gonna have to guard the running back route. So because the user has to sit and guard the running back route, by that time, the tight end has gotten all the way across the formation and he is going to be able to manipulate that coverage. This is also one of my favorite, favorite routes in the game for when your opponent is doing the these adjustments right here if you're starting to see that this is a super like common adjustment that you're starting to see uh just kind of playing through the game they're they're doing these these man ups on the left side this is super super helpful uh and the reason why is because we're going to kind of mess that man coverage up with some motion it's a dead giveaway that they're in man coverage because he follows him and then as you can see if that guy goes in man coverage on that outside receiver this is wide open in the middle of the field and you're going to have uh, potential for a really 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 big play so that is how we utilize that setup so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at um, kind of a kind of a, another manipulation and we're going to talk a little bit more about the corner route on the left side how we can attack that side and then we're going to get into some stuff for attacking kind of the right sideline I do think it is important to cover that because you want to be able to attack the entirety of the field every offense needs to be able to attack the majority of spaces um, on the field so the next route combo that we're going to showcase is actually going to be out of the play shallow x dig this is, uh, this is a super, super effective route combination, and it's designed to be able to manipulate the cover four and the cover three coverage. Again, trying to funnel them into kind of that cover two on, on the tight end side of the formation. So what we're going to do to set this play up is we're going to streak our inside trips receiver. We're going to uh, drag our outside trips receiver. We're going to tight end apprentice corner our tight end, and then we're going to block our running back. And what you're going to see is this streak is going to clear out all the deep zones. And you're going to basically get this high low kind of in the middle of the field. As you see against cover four, we're able to throw the ball in a place where only our receiver can catch it. And we're able to get some really, really nice yardage. Now, the next coverage that we're going to show you uh, this against, oftentimes you are going to be able to get a one play score. And the way you're going to get this one play score is through the tight end corner on a cover three. And you'll see that this can actually get right over the top of that outside third. And so this is why the majority of times when I play and I run trips tight end, I see most people play cover two to the tight end side. Generally speaking, that is kind of the overwhelming way people want to play defense because if they don't play defense like that, then that means that this crosser is going to beat them for a touchdown in the middle of the field. Now, if they do play that cover two coverage that we just talked about, one of the real underrated aspects of this play is that you can actually wait on this and throw this on the sideline. A lot of people really mess this up, and I, I do think it's worth mentioning. So we want the user to have to fully commit to going and defending that crosser. So because of that, what we're going to look to do here is you can actually be patient with this play, and you can throw this kind of over here, and oftentimes you're going to be able to, to catch it. Now, the other thing that you can do, of course, if I didn't get screamed at like crazy right there, the other really important thing to understand is oftentimes this guy's going to be manned up, right? Most of the defenses that we've talked about have really kind of all centered around manning up that triangle receiver because of the play verticals. Well, look what we're able to do against cover two, which is probably the best coverage for this. You can throw this here and possession catch it even with the man coverage. And again, it's going to be a little bit better with a better route running player there. But just understand you have the, the capability to do that. So even in a situation where they may be running like a double, a true double flat, you're going to be able to really, you know, take advantage of the defense just because of the setup right here. So again here, 
you know, we're kind of walking them into having to play that cover two, but notice we can possession catch it if we time the throw kind of in that key window that I was showing you. So that is this play in terms of its capabilities uh, to be able to beat those coverages. And then if you think about what they're going to do with their user, they're just going to run to the middle of the field. They're going to go guard the crosser. So if they do that, and you got to kind of use your judgment, but I want to show you one little variation of this setup that I do like. So you'll see here, you can kind of throw this underneath as a check down in the middle of the field. Now, one of the real underrated things that we have not really covered yet in this little kind of ebook is we haven't covered how to high low here to the right. So again, I said a lot of times what they like to do, they like to use curl flats or cloud flats over here to the right side. If they're doing that against you, what I love to do at this play is to simply take the running back and we're just gonna put him on a flat route or table route. What this is gonna do is it's just going to high low that defender and then we can just check up field and we know how good the juking is in this game. Oftentimes you can turn a flat route into an easy 10 yard gain. This just allows us to have the ability to kind of push them to have to hard flat. If they're constantly cloud flatting, it's going to make the tight end corner a little bit more difficult to be thrown. Now, that being said, we do have this play in PA boot shot to this little kind of like tight end corner route that I do want to mention. So this, this corner route out of the play uh, PA boot shot here is going to be pretty good for you. And uh, what you'll see this is able to do is it's just a little bit deeper. It's, it's actually significantly deeper than the tight end apprentice corner route. So all we're going to do from a, from a route combo perspective is we are just going to essentially center around that. So what I like to do in terms of my setup here is we're going to streak the running back on the right-hand side of the screen. We're going to, from there, we're going to drag the middle trips receiver, inside trips receiver. We're going to flat the outside trips receiver and then we're going to in route so we kind of have a double double check down type of combo even if you wanted to motion block this receiver you certainly could do that and you're just going to pass like this up and out to the sideline now notice how the half kind of notice how that deep half can kind of cause some issues for that route combo uh, so how do we manipulate that and how do we kind of you know take advantage of that so if we want to kind of ensure that this is going to be thrown really really well on that right side what we want to do here is we want to freeform down and outside and kind of trust the depth of the route. If they're pressed up and they're in a cloud flat, they're not going to get back there. So again, kind of trust this really almost like a speed out to the corner and you're going to get that nice possession catch on the sideline. The next play that we're going to be going over is the play deep in out of the Bills playbook. Super effective. I did want to show you this. This is, I don't call this a ton, but this is a one play touchdown against cover three, cover four, super effective play that I did want to mention. So uh, the biggest thing that you have here is you have the skinny post to the, to the inside trips receiver. Um, and then what you're going to be able to do with this is, I don't know what I, I think I accidentally motioned this guy across. You have this corner to the tight end stock to the play. So if you ever want to run any of our setups where we're using tight end short corners, the actual cool part about this play is you actually have a stock tight end corner that you can kind of build around if you want to, if you want to do, even if you wanted to do this setup right here, this is a really good setup. You can certainly get away with this. It's a really good setup, kind of back to our, our wide receiver short post. But in general, against cover three, uh, what you're going to do here to kind of set this up is you're just going to streak your slot receiver. That's all you really have to do. Uh, I don't even know that you have to do that. I'm going to show that in a minute. But I do want to show, like, just by streaking him, you'll see kind of once he crosses the face of that middle third, he's going to be – over the top. Now that can happen. I'm going to talk about how to prevent that. So if you ever get in a position where you feel like that could happen to you, and again, this is a little bit of this is preference. The easy solution to that is to just motion this in and snap it kind of right in here. As you'll see here, that middle third will get held by that streak, and this is going to become a lot more open over the top. So it is kind of important to showcase that, but I don't want to have a direct tell that this is what I'm doing. So I want to have other route combinations that are effective. For example, you know, maybe, you know, one of the ones that you could do utilize is you could even motion in this outside player and, and run it like this. You, you could certainly do something like this, you know, and the cool part here is that the motion motion snap kind of does the same thing. Now, uh, cover four, I find this. I find cover four guards it. So, the biggest thing with with cover four, cover three, though, that I did want to mention is you can try 
to actually go ahead and run this play without, because uh, if we think about how, how are they going to defend this, right? Oftentimes the middle third is going to come from here and this guy's going to be manned up on triangle. This is kind of a standard way that people would defend you. So because that middle third is coming from the right to left, it's going to kind of change how it works. So you'll see this post will really cross the face a lot better, a lot faster, and you can kind of throw this over the top and, and basically it becomes almost like a one-on-one -on -one user catch. Certainly could do that. But in general, you know, kind of the surefire best way and, and most tested way uh, to do this is going to be to use this motion snap just because it's going to make sure that that middle third is never going to, never going to manipulate, you know, he's never going to do anything. So you see how he goes to that streak and then you're able to throw this and it's a little bit more open, just a little bit more safe for you uh, to be able to manipulate the coverage that way. So the one thing I did want to say about cover four. So uh, another little element that is, is something you can kind of look at here too, is if you wanted to, you could run the tight end on just a basic, like the basic drag route. Sometimes what can happen is because that post is coming from super deep, you can actually throw this all the way across the field, essentially over that outside quarter zone. That's something you can try to do as well. We have another bomb that's probably a little bit better for cover four, but just know like oftentimes this outside quarter doesn't guard it and you can kind of throw this over here. It does depend a little bit on what that inside quarter does. Now, as I said, we have another bomb for you. So the other bomb I like to use is PA post shot or PA boot shot. And we're going to streak this middle trips receiver. We're going to tight end apprentice post the tight end. And we're going to slant the inside trips receiver. This is the only time I'm going to slant him. The reason why is the slant is better for pulling routes. But slants are so inconsistent this year. So just keep this in mind. This is my way of manipulating cover four, which cover four being the only coverage that is truly what I would consider quote unquote safe. So uh, what you'll see against this cover four is we're gonna be able to hit this deep post route over the top for a one play score. And that's going to basically happen against cover two, cover three as well. We'll show you here cover three. And for our purposes, because of everything we've been talking about, about manning up triangle, we'll go ahead and make the cover three like this which is kind of the standard way people will be running cover three against you. Again, the setup, post the tight end, slant the inside, and streak this guy. If you call this and they don't go use of the post, it's almost always going to be a touchdown for you, as you'll see. And, of course, I said that before I threw it. I got to wait just a little longer uh, to throw that post. Now, just notice that does play the post better. That's worth, like, you know, just kind of mentioning that that adjustment can uh, play the post route a little bit better and the main perp or the main reason why it can do that is just because of the grid system that Madden's based on with zones but a lot of times if you wait long enough this post is going to cross the face of the middle third see how he'll keep going and he'll be able to outrun and kind of have that little window to hit it but that's the best defense for it if they do run cover two this is a uh, pretty much automatic one play score so you just have to realize, you know, the best thing someone can really do is run a middle third from the tight end side to your side, but then that leaves them very vulnerable to the short corners and really everything else that we've talked about in, in the trips tight end offense. That being said, the last couple plays I wanted to go over are just two red zone plays that are going to be super effective for you. Uh, the first one and, and is really just universal. But I actually like wide receiver short post, but you could do this out of anything. P boot shot, you're just going to flat the middle trips receiver, in route the outside trips receiver, post the tight end and smart route it. And what you're going to see here is this has been one of the best plays in Madden for years. Someone's going to pop open almost always in the back of the end zone. Now, that being said, in this year's game, there's a lot of um, – just it's, it's, it's just kind of hard to beat cloud flats. Like it's hard to beat these clouds in the, in the, in the red zone. So what we're going to do to attack the cloud flats is we're going to actually utilize a hitch and a ghost route. So we're going to use those two routes in tandem. And what you'll see here, this tight end post, see how that cloud flat kind of sucks inside. And then the tight end post is open to the sideline. Huh. Right, let me show you one more time. And again, I'll just go to a traditional cover two so you can kind of see uh, what we're talking about. But essentially, this would be what I would do. And this tight end post is going to be thrown all the way here to the left side, possession catch in the back corner of the end zone. The one unique thing about the Bills playbook is you do have this uh, unique slant route to circle. 
this route will actually run pretty well in the red zone. And you can throw it once it gets all the way over there. As you see, I got to freeform that. But you can kind of throw it over in that window. Now, again, as you see here, I'm in the middle of the field. It'll be a little bit better if I was on a hash. Um, this is why hash marks in Madden, you know, I can't stress enough how uh, just truly important hash marks are uh, because they make it, they make it, you know, you'll see here, see how that ghost kind of pulls that flat. And then if they do go there, then I can throw it to the ghost and have, you know, a potential, potential touchdown that way as well. But it just makes it so that you can uh, be in a position where you can pull cloud flats. Most people run cloud flats. Um, so you see, see like right here, for example, I can kind of get that. I probably got to high point that, but there's a little window in which I can hit that. Or if they do roll back to that route, then I can just throw, throw the, um, I can just throw the, 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 uh, ghost route. Now I want to show you the same thing here, but we're going to do it from a different play. And that play is going to be drive post. We haven't really got into this play much, but it's one of my favorite plays every year. And it's a really unique post route. It's not a slot apprentice post. It's kind of a unique one. So what you're going to do is basically this right here. And what you'll see is this ghost route will do a really good job, a much better job of kind of holding. And then you can always kind of, you know, either playmaker that goes back across the middle. If for whatever reason it doesn't work, generally it's going to in, in game. Uh, kind of odd that it's not working super good for us in practice mode here. But in general, this post right on the sideline can be thrown. For whatever reason, it's not cooperating with us today. But um, the main route combo that I like is flat, um, really just this right here. I, I love this play, and I, I've ran this for the last several years. It's really effective just because this in route's almost always open. They have to do some specific things to stop that, and then it's it's kind of hard to defend everything that you can do from the formation. Uh, smart route at corner routes to the tight end. Uh, can can sometimes work. I find in this year's game, they're a little too inconsistent for me. But we do also have the RPO. So don't be afraid to RPO, you know, throw that bubble screen, try to get in. That's a really good play. The other cool part about Bills is you have single back, deuce close, and you have a slot. So what I would do is I would come out in single back, deuce close, probably honestly in the jet sweep. And then that means they'll probably come out in 4-3, even 6-1, and you're just going to audible to the jet sweep or, or come out in it and basically just hurdle upfield to try to get in that way. The cool part about deuce close is you can flip the jet sweep. So you can flip it, and they're never going to know. And then you just you can, you can journal for whatever reason. We're getting terrible blocking uh, with 6-1. But another thing you can do against 6-1 is you can audible and you would want to run this uh, zone alert bubble. The reason why is because oftentimes they're going to man that square defender up on on uh, the, the bubble screen, and then you're going to be able to basically juke inside once, and you're going to be in for the end zone. So that's another method that I like to use. And then, of course, you know, I'd be crazy if I didn't say run stretch alert bubble. Stretch alert bubble has been really the best red zone play in the game. All you really have to do here is just juke, one, get one juke inside, and oftentimes it's going to be a touchdown for you. Thank you for watching this little mini ebook here. If you guys want to get my full offensive defensive ebooks, we have over 17 of them over on our school.com page, school.com slash Cody Bauer. Link to sign up for that is going to be down in the description below. It's only $10 to become a member and it gets you access to both all of our Madden content, but as well, it's also going to get you access to all of our college football content as soon as that game drops. It's only $10. Great place to become better. If you want to sign up for that, the link is down in the description below.